Good evening, everyone. Good evening, good evening. Thank you all so much for coming. I'm delighted to have you all here. It's, it's going to be a wonderful session today. We thank God for another evening. Um, good evening, Annette. Since, since you responded first, why don't you pray with us to start off? <laughs> No, it just made me laugh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, tell you pray. Our Lord and Master Jesus Christ, the opportunity to share the testimony and the strength. And can I please speak up a bit? Pray that the Holy Spirit will take us in control. Over tonight's program, over the days, over the networks, take over the person who is going to speak to us. That is, and I pray for you, the participants, that you give us an attentive spirit. Just cause our spirits to be in tune with whatever we are going to hear tonight. Let somebody be encouraged. Let somebody get a bit of a from just listening to the testimony. We give you all the praise. Give you all the glory and answer prayer. In Jesus' name, I will pray the thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. Once again, you're all very welcome. This is the Abi Imani Reveals Show. This is where we speak, we are real, so that we can live and not just live any life, but the abundant life that Christ Jesus has gifted us with. Um, so in line with that, uh, we talk about every aspect of life. And today we want to talk about how to deal with the stigma of childlessness. Particularly in our world, it's, it's a big issue. First of all, there's pressure to get married once you come of age. Once you get married, you're not free. And the next question comes, when are you having children? And sometimes, as God will have it, for some people, it doesn't come early or it doesn't come at all. And it's, it's um, a thorny issue here. And it can be quite um, disturbing for, for the couple and even their family. So I thought it good to um, open up a platform like this to be able to chat about this and see how as Christians we are dealing with it <clears throat> and how we are reacting to people in that situation, whether we are we are being um, encouraging or we are putting so much pressure on them that they are, they are desperate. So um, without saying too much, I would, um, but before then, as we always, always do, our guest will speak and when he's done or during his um, presentation, if you have any questions, you can type it in the chat box and then when he's done, we'll have the Q&A session where we'll read out the questions or if you want to um, speak out your question you raise your hand or you unmute yourself and then you go ahead today we have pastor craig holiday um, he's given me a brief profile of himself but I, I was a bit late so i wasn't able to open it but let me say a little i know about him i met him at the brooklyn tabernacle church um, currently he's not there anymore but i'll allow him to say a bit about himself and um, before he he proceeds with what he has for us this evening so pastor craig you are so welcome i'm delighted to have you on the abby Umani reviews show and hey there you are <laughs> okay can you can you hear me you hear me fine yeah 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 good good, good. 
yeah thank you so much so yes please go ahead and speak to us well first let me just say this abby it, it's an honor to be a part of what you're doing um I, i'm always amazed at how we can leverage technology and use it in such a way for god's glory right you know we're we're all over the world um and i happen to be here in the united states and yet and still we can leverage this digital platform to be able to share God's word, encourage one another. And um, I know this is not the ideal way that we get together, but this is a way that we can uh, yeah. come together. And so I'm just honored to be a part of what you're doing over there, um, where you're at, you know, the, the, the corner of the world, so to speak, <laughs> where you are. Um, you are dearly missed. Um, but uh, missed you too. I am I'm honored, yes. You were going to say something? No, I'm saying I've missed you too. <laughs> oh, yes, yes. And so let, let me let me tell you a little bit about myself before I jump into what I, I, God has placed on my heart to share. Um, you know, I, I, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, um, in the United States, um, from those who, who may not know. And Brooklyn is part of the five boroughs in New York City. Um, and so I was born and raised there. Uh, went to middle school, high school, um, played uh, high school sports, played college sports, uh, played overseas in Israel, uh, played basketball, um, oh, okay. just to give you a, a sense. And, um, you know, I was raised by a single mom. Um, I have two siblings, uh, an older brother, a younger sister. Um, by the age of, as far as I can, I think 10 or 11, um, my parents were separated and then proceeded to a divorce, um, which was a good thing for my mom because she was a strong believer um, and she stood on her faith and it was an abusive relationship where uh, there was physical abuse, there was uh, spiritual abuse, there was emotional abuse in that relationship. Um, and she decided that she couldn't take it anymore. And so that being said, um, I spent after coming back from overseas, I spent 15 plus years in the business world. Um, and then from there, I uh, proceeded to uh, come on staff at the Brooklyn Tabernacle where I spent over 15 plus years in full-time ministry. Um, I led the men's ministry there for over 12 years, um, very vibrant men's ministry. Um, I was an associate pastor there for almost 10 years. Uh, also led marriage small groups and was a part of the marriage ministry and spoke at some of the marriage retreats. My wife and I, um, of 23 years, this May 15th, we were being married for 23 years. Um, and it's wow. been a blessing. Um, yeah. And uh, her name is Vanessa, but I call her VJ. That's a long story, and I'm not <laughs> going to bore you with that one. <laughs> and so uh, I won't do that. Um, we also have taught premarital class, uh, give premarital counseling. Uh, I've done mentorship, mentorship, excuse me, um, also biblical counseling for over the past 15 plus year. Continue to do that, uh, perform uh, wedding ceremonies. Um, I just actually did one this past Friday, which I was honored to do. Um, and so I've, I've, I'm still immersed in ministry. I'm just no longer serving at the Brooklyn Tabernacle in the capacity of an associate pastor there. Yeah. Um, I love God's people um, on so many levels. And so God has given me a passion to continue to minister to especially our homeless neighbors. Um, mm -hmm. That especially has grown here in the New York City area um, as a result of everything that has happened with COVID-19 and if you know anything about how it impacted the United States, um, they considered New York City the epic center. Yeah. Um, we suffered probably the most, we did, we suffered the most deaths um, out of the entire country, New York City. Um, yeah. and, and so, and, and I lived right in the heart of, of, of the downtown area of Brooklyn, where uh, literally I can look out my high rise apartment and there's a hospital up the block and they had two refrigerated trucks uh, parked outside the hospital that mm -hmm. they had to store bodies in because they just didn't have enough room. So I, I know 
firsthand the impact of COVID-19. Yeah. Um, and as a result of it, my, my wife had lost two, two uncles to it. So oh. um, it's impacted my family. But we're not here to talk about that. We're, we're here to deal and talk about the stigma of childlessness. And you know, I, I, I chuckled on the inside, uh, Abby, as you were introducing the topic, because it has been a stigma or expectations that have been built around based on cultural beliefs and everything mm -hmm. else. But here's the thing I want to say. It, 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 it didn't just start um, recently. When you think about and you read the Bible, you can go all the way back to Genesis. Mm -hmm. um, and you see the decisions that Abraham made with Sarah to, to sleep with uh, uh, his, her, her slave Hagar um, and create an Ishmael, right? Mm -hmm. um, you can see where that was all about cultural pressure. Um, back in those days, mm -hmm. uh, if you got married, you were supposed to be fruitful and multiply, right? Mm -hmm. You were supposed to have children, you're married. And mm -hmm. so uh, Abraham and Sarah up in age, uh, she was barren. And so God gave him a promise, but Sarah wanted to circumvent the promise. And we see what happened. Hagar, she became um, nasty towards um, Sarah and Sarah put her out, Ishmael, and, and here's the thing. Um, that was a generation that was created in Jesus, and God said that he will never he will never be at peace with anyone. And so what you have now over in Israel is cousins fighting each other. Hmm. Right? That, that's what you have. And so I, I want to pause there because I think there's always a lesson in everything. Even if though we're talking about childlessness, there's a lesson in that. Uh, yeah. The lesson for me is one, um, for men, I, I don't know how many men are on this call um, or on this live stream or who's going to see this, is when we are not operating in alignment with God's purpose and plans, we create collateral damage. Mm. Because in spite of Sarah making the decision and telling him to go do that, he knew that was outside of God's will because God has given him a a, 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 a commitment that was God's word. God told him what he was going to do for him. Yeah. He went outside of that anyway. And so we, we have to recognize this as men that God has called us to be the leaders, not the followers. Okay. Not to lead in an authoritative way, but to lead in a loving way. That's why the Bible does say in the New Testament, Paul says, Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. And so that's in a sacrificial servant of way. We have another story of that. When you think about the uh, and, and, and Elkanah and Hannah and, and, and Penelope um, and how that came about in 1 Samuel, um, you know, one wife was able to have kids and, and gave Elkanah a lot of kids. And here we have Hannah who's barren and she's feeling the pressure of the community. Mm -hmm. of her peers uh, to have a child. And so she would go uh, into the temple and weep and weep and weep. And finally, God gave her a prophet named Samuel. And he dedicate, she dedicated him to Samuel. So we know that this is not something that just happened. Yeah. We can look in the Bible and see that this has been a stigma for a long time. But here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to talk to you from a woman's perspective. I would need my wife to do that. I'm going to give you it from a man's perspective, because That's even though we bring it to a place where it's always the woman that's looked upon, um, mm -hmm. when you're a man and you don't have children, mm -hmm. there's whispers as well. Okay. There's okay. peer pressure as well. Yeah. There's yeah. things that you have to answer. There's questions. People have, you know, all these questions and scenarios about why you don't have children. And, and let me say this. Uh, like I said, my wife and I have been married. We would be married 23 years this coming May 15th. We have no children. We have no biological children. I have no children outside of my marriage. Mm -hmm. um, my wife has no children outside the marriage. Um, and, um, and so that comes with challenges because um, no matter where you go, culturally speaking, um, you're going to get questioned about that. Um, yeah. When are you going to have children? Yeah. Um, and there's been times that I've been I've been asked, you know, why why don't you have kids? Um, it, you would be a great father. I listen to you. I see how you you pour into other men and and 
how do you encourage uh, young ladies and everything else? And so it comes with a challenge because sometimes, you know, people make a decision not to have kids for various reasons. Yeah. So let me give you my story. My wife and I never tried not to have kids. Let, let me say that. Um, okay. And we never put forth to try to have kids. Okay. What we did was, because we got married later in life, right, now I'm going to date myself. Because a lot of people look at me and say, you don't look your age. Um, but I'm almost pushing 60. And so, wow. um, really? And, and so, when, when you get to that place, that threshold, um, especially if you get married later in life, what begins to happen is you begin to face this reality that um, you may not have kids and it may not been, have been in God's plan, mm. right? And one of the things that I wasn't going to do was have my wife take injections. We weren't going to look at the calendar to see if she's oblating or anything. We weren't going to do all those things. We were just saying, if God allows it, he allows it. If not, it's for a reason. Okay. Other people make that decision, and I, I, I can't agree or disagree with them, but I've listened to men say that, you know, why would I want to bring a child up in this world? There's so much evil, so much hatred. You, we have to deal with racism and, and the inequities and everything else. So why would I want to bring a child up in this world? Um, I've, I've heard that. I've heard that one. Um, some people have asked me, uh, do I think I'm being selfish? for not having children that my wife and I were selfish because we we could have um, we could have uh, you know raised up some children who could have been productive in society hmm. well, all I can say is God didn't have that in plan for us that wasn't part of his plan and his mission as yeah. far as I know of and, and, and so it, it, it was not for selfish reasons but here's the one thing I will say to you is this. Because you can find yourself in a place where you don't have children. You may not want to have children. Um, who knows? You may be single. And that might be how you go through life. As a single man or a single woman. We don't know that. We all assume that everyone is going to get married. That is not the case. Right? We all assume that everyone is going to have children. That is not the case. Yep. I approach this this way. You know, Paul speaks about being single in 1 Corinthians 6. And he talks about how you can dedicate your life to the work of the Lord and, and everything else. And so I, I'm going to make a parallel with what Paul says in 1 Corinthians 6 and 7 and use that for my own personal life, right? I've used it for my own personal life in this way. Because I don't have children, then I can pour into other young men, be a father figure to other young men, be a mentor, be a spiritual uncle, be a spiritual big brother. Not just young men, but I've been that to young women as well. Mm. The father figure that they may not have at home being that person for them yeah. that is speaking to them in a way that they can see me as someone who's safe, someone who's going to love them unconditionally, but someone who's going to give them uh, godly principles and how to approach life. God has blessed me to have a whole litany or litter, if I put it that way, of spiritual sons and daughters. God has blessed me that way, of, of nieces and nephews, of little brothers and little sisters. Mm -hmm. God has blessed me that way, and that's how I choose to go about still being a vessel of honor for God, still being able to pour in to young people's lives because I don't have a biological child. Mm -hmm. Here's what I would say, because a lot of us get caught up on what's going to be the legacy or the inheritance that we keep on if we don't have any children. What, what's going to be that legacy? 
What's going to be that inheritance? Well, listen to what uh, Solomon says in Proverbs uh, 13, 22a. He says, a good man leaves an inheritance to his grandchildren, right? His grandchildren. The way I see that is, whomever, whether it's my spiritual sons or spiritual daughters, imparting in them what God has given me because of those who have mentored me, those who have been uh, kind of like my paws, my spiritual fathers in life, what they've poured into me that I can pour into them, they're going to pour into their children. Yeah. That's the inheritance that I'm leaving for them, right? Yeah. That's the legacy that I'm leaving for myself because I've been able to impact someone else's life for the kingdom in such a way that now I put them on a trajectory in their life where they can begin to bring up their child in the fear of the Lord. Mm. That's the legacy. I love what Solomon says in Ecclesiastes 7 11. He says, Wisdom is as good as an inheritance and an advantage to those who see the sun. Wisdom, imparting wisdom to those who God has brought around me, those who God has uh, kind of given me responsibility for, imparting that wisdom to them, leaving that inheritance to them, letting them know that I am there for them. If they see me as a spiritual dad, I take that seriously. If they see me as a spiritual uncle, I take that seriously. If they see me as a spiritual big brother, I take that seriously. Why? Because they're probably lacking that in their lives. Yeah. And so if God has placed me in their lives, he placed me in their lives for a reason. And so I don't have to walk around worried about the stigma of not having children myself. Because mm. God has blessed me with so many. <laughs> I can't tell you how many birthdays I have to keep up with. <laughs> um, I can't tell you how many times that I'm getting, uh, uh, and, and, and in a joyous way, I'm, and I'm not saying... This is in a good way. How many yeah. times someone is letting me know that they just had another child, hmm. right? And, and I feel like, okay, that, that he's my little brother, so now I'm another uncle. Right? Oh, yeah. I got another niece or another nephew. That's hmm. how I look at it. Why? Because I know that I'm a part of these people's lives. And they're a part of my lives. They're mm -hmm. part of the fra fra fabric of my life. And I'll say this. I'm going to close with this because I, I know you may have some questions. I share there are those who God brings into your life that will look at you as if you're a, a man, a spiritual father, possibly. If you're a woman, a spiritual mother, a spiritual aunt, a spiritual big sister, right? I have had the pleasure, I have had the pleasure of having a spiritual daughter. I, now I have several, but this one, even my wife says, that's your daughter. And the reason she says that is because of the relationship that I've had with this young lady in such a way that she says, if she begins to look like you, I'm going to start asking questions because she's gotten your mannerisms. <laughs> I've seen her mature in such a way because you and her go out to lunch. We, we spend time together. We're always talking. And so I had the pleasure over three years ago of marrying her, officiating her wedding. But here's the kicker. Because God knows your heart and he knows the desires of your heart. And even if you don't have kids, you may have a desire to one day give your daughter away if you're a guy, right? Or go to your, your son's wedding, right? While we were at the reception, um, I'm sitting there with my wife and I hear the MC calling my name. And I'm trying to figure out why is he calling my name? Because uh, I've done all that I could do. I did the ceremony at the church. Now I'm at the reception and I'm sitting here and I'm ready, I'm ready to have a meal. 
right? But little do I know, my spiritual daughter comes over to me and says, Dad, we have to have our daddy-daughter dance. I'm telling you this because that's the legacy. That's the legacy. That's the inheritance that God has given me to be able to lay down to her. And her husband sees me as her, his dad. And so I, I, I want to encourage you that if you have uh, been under um, peer pressure, because a lot of time it's peer pressure, cultural pressure, um, you know, some people make snide remarks. Um, what I would say is, is this, allow God to use you to have an impact and to someone who doesn't have that spiritual uh, big brother or father or mother or big sister, uh, whatever that looks like, however God can use you, as his hand extended, allow God to do that. Because I tell you, it was so hard to keep from crying when she came over and pulled me onto the dance floor to have a daddy-daughter dance in front of all those guests. Yeah. Fighting to hold it together when I saw her coming down the aisle during her wedding. And I'm supposed to officiate this thing. <laughs> and they're snapping pictures. And my <laughs> wife and all her friends are sitting there saying, he's going to break. He's getting ready to break. Look at him. He's getting ready to break. He's not going to hold it together. He's not going to be able to do the ceremony. That's my legacy. Yeah. That's my inheritance. Yeah. And I know that if and when they decide to have kids, they're going to look at me and say, here's your grandson, here's your granddaughter. Mm -hmm. yeah. That will be my legacy. Yeah. And so let me pray and then we can, uh, is that okay, Abby? If I pray, yeah. we can go to Q&A. Sure. I just, I just want to pray. Father, I just, I just know there might be someone out there right now Lord, who, who heard my words as I was speaking, who will hear my words in the future because this is a live stream. It's going to be living on the digital platform for some time. God, I just pray that my words were encouraging. I pray, Lord, for someone, Lord, who might be struggling in this area, of feeling some level of inadequacy because they have fallen under the stigma or the peer pressure of not having children. They might not even be married because that comes with a stigma. Everyone expects you to get married. But Lord, I want them to realize that you have a plan, a purpose, and a mission for their lives, oh God. You said in your word, it's not to harm them, it's not to bring calamity, oh Lord. And so Lord, if they are single, if they don't have children, that's not calamity to you, Lord. You have something still you have for them to do. So Father, I pray, Lord, for that man might be struggling. I pray, Lord, that he would um, allow you to use him to be a spiritual father, a spiritual big brother, a spiritual uncle, and whatever capacity you want to use him in, oh God. And Father, I pray for that sister, oh God, who is struggling in that area and hearing remarks from family members or friends. God, I pray, Lord, that she would incline her heart to you in the same way, oh God, and allow you to use her as a spiritual mother to those who don't have that person in place, a spiritual aunt or a spiritual big system for someone who is lacking in that area in their lives, a young woman who is lacking in that area. And so God, I thank you, Lord, for just this opportunity to just share my small story, oh God, and how you bless me abundantly, how you bless me and my wife in such an awesome way, oh God. Father, I even see how you use her, Lord, to, to be a big sister to those who who are who gravitate to my wife of oh God in such a way, Lord, because you've given us so much wisdom and discernment and knowledge. And it all comes from you. So God, I just pray for anyone who hears this, that they would be encouraged. For your glory and for your honor. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Um, before I proceed, I want to say that 
um, Pastor Craig's wife would have joined us, but because of the timing, yeah, she yeah. has to be at work. His, his schedule is <laughs> quite flexible, so he was able to meet the time. Hopefully, we, we can have her, like, like you said, one yeah. of these days, and she can also talk from the woman's perspective. I really like that you, you did it from a man's perspective. And like you said, most of the time, it's a woman who's looked at, you know, and statistics yeah, yeah. show that sometimes it, it's actually the man who is unable to, you know. Um, yeah, he might have health problems. Yeah. He might, he might yeah. Uh, yeah. And you're so well, right. I'm glad. Yeah. Sorry, go on. No, I was just, I was just going to reiterate what you said. Uh, just, uh, um, just add on to what you said. It's a lot of times I, because I've been questioned. Mm. I've had people in a polite way and sometimes a very unpolite way yeah. ask me why why don't i have kids why don't we have children what's yeah. wrong with us it's like how do you walk up to someone and say what's wrong with you yeah who does yeah. that but, you know but people really, will do that yeah really insensitive yeah people can yeah not not considering okay there, there, there could be fortunate enough there was as far as we know there was no help Mm. issues with us mm. that it just didn't happen yeah and then as you get older um you just start going do i want to be in my 50s running around behind a teenager yeah. uh, you know i'm still I, at that age i'm trying to fight off my fights you know <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's like one of my friends said to me but one of my pastor friends he goes hey craig remember we used to talk about sports now we talk about injuries yeah, it's true. We always talk about the injuries. <laughs> it's like time change. <laughs> oh goodness, that's so funny. <laughs> Anyways, so yeah, so I'll open up the floor. But before then, I want to ask: um, Are you able to share why you decided to wait a bit before getting married? You said you married later in life. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason? And and before you got married, did you have um, expectations to have children? Was it one of your desires? Okay. okay, so uh, here's here's kind of like my life journey because I, I I try to um, package it in a way that we can report. But I'll, I'll go. So a, a year, you know, after coming back from playing sports overseas, playing basketball overseas, um, I started dating a young lady, and I moved in with. Her. I wasn't serving the Lord. Mm. Um, my wife always jokes and said, "You were living in sin." I go, okay, let's, <laughs> but uh, okay. she, she gets hardcore, she gets hardcore, she just goes straight to the church, we're living in exactly. the and, and I lived, and I lived with my girlfriend at that time for six and a half years. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, that's a long time. And so, mm -hmm. um, and so during that time, I realized how childish I was. You know, when Paul says in uh, First Corinthians 13, when I was a child, I reasoned like a child, I felt like a child, I yeah. acted like a child, but then I had to put childish things away. Well, mm -hmm. I was an overgrown adolescent. That's how I would describe myself. And mm -hmm. so I wasn't ready to put childish things away because she was, um, she was mature. She knew what she wanted in the life. Me, I was still trying to figure it out. And mm -hmm. the, the thing was, I was causing her a lot of spiritual and emotional trauma. Um, and, and so after, after she decided to move out, um, because she said she just didn't want to be in a relationship anymore, um, yeah. I, I started going through a transformation. Um, because um, after she moved out, I began to sit in my apartment that was empty, and I had to say, Craig, what is it about every relationship that um, has ended that you could never and, and, and I wasn't just talking about um, dating relationships I was just talking about my relationships friends and everything else mm -hmm. and I had to come to the reality that I was the common denominator so it, it was me it wasn't them I could yeah. no longer say they're crazy they, <laughs> they don't get it they don't understand I had mm -hmm. to stop and say no it's you Hmm. Something's going along with you. And, and there's when I, I allow God to begin to get a hold of my heart 
and I went through a spiritual transformation, um, okay. a renewing of the heart, uh, transforming of the heart, so to speak, and a renewing of the mind. And um, I started going through my spiritual formation. Okay. How old were and you? I was in. Uh, I was when I gave my heart to the Lord. I was like thirty one, thirty two. Okay. Um, my wife and I got no, no yeah, thirty one, thirty two. My wife and I got married. I was thirty six. Okay. That, that, yeah, that's not a bad age for a man, actually. Say again. That's not a bad age for marriage for a man, actually. No, but you you, you realize I, I, most of my friends were getting married in their twenties, like okay. shortly after college and stuff okay. like that, right? Yeah. And um, yeah. and so here here you have I have friends who are married; they're in their mid to late twenties, and here I am. I'm in my thirties, and I'm not even settled. I don't even have a steady. <laughs> I don't even have a steady uh, girlfriend in my life. Someone I'm dating. Right? And so, um, you know, like two, three years later, after not dating anyone, when I met my wife, mm -hmm. um, working in a financial institution, and uh, we met in the gym through a, a mutual colleague. Okay. And uh, we started dating. We dated, and we were going to do two different churches. So she grew up at the Brooklyn Tabernacle. I was going to oh. another church. Okay. Um, I had never heard of the Brooklyn Tabernacle. Didn't hear of it. Um, I, I wasn't she really actually into. pulled you there. Yeah, she pulled me there. She, <laughs> she pulled me there. I was living in Queens. She pulled me to Brooklyn. Um, yeah, there was a lot of pulling. <laughs> 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 there was a lot of pulling going on. Okay. So she pulled me there. She pulled me from Queens. She wasn't going to move to Queens to Brooklyn. Um, <laughs> for anyone who knows, um, it's about an hour commute um, yeah. going from Queens yeah. to Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, it, so she wasn't. She she is like no. I don't. I don't. I don't know what that looks like. I, I'm used to ten minutes. Why would I want to be commuting for an hour? And so, so that that's kind of how it, it, it kind of happened. Okay. Okay. So so how about her? Was she looking? How old was her then? Was she looking to have kids? Well, you know what? I don't. It wasn't that she wasn't. She was. So my wife was, when, when I met my wife, my wife was going through a divorce. Oh. She was married before. Yeah. Okay. So she married a guy at the church. Um, so everyone that goes to church, you know, this guy, unfortunately, was living a double lifestyle. He was seeing oh. someone else while he was dating her and still got engaged with everything, went to the ceremony. Um, she wanted counseling. Um, he wasn't open to it. Hmm. Um, and it, you know, it was because of abandonment yeah. um, that the church backed her and said, "Yeah, you, you need to file." He's already because he had already left. Um, he was heavily involved with this other woman, and so it was just abandoned the marriage. Mm. Mm. Yeah, and so it wasn't a thing where, like I said, um, where you know, neither one of us. I, I've always, I think, most guys. I can't say all guys. Most men, like I said, dream about giving their daughter away at the mm -hmm. wedding or mm -hmm. going to a wedding, you know, or holding them, watching them go through the years and stuff. Um, like I said, for whatever reason, God didn't give us that. Yeah. And, and I, you know what? But he's blessed me abundantly in so many other areas. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm opening the floor now. Please, if you have any questions, you can type them or you can just unmute or raise your hand and then they will be addressed. So anyone going first? And so Abby, you're going to control everything, right? Yes. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> I was afraid I was going to have to do something. I was like, okay, no, I'm not, I'm not that tech savvy. I'm good, but not that good. Oh, really? Are you sure? Uh, I think, uh, is that Emily? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hi, um, Pastor Holiday. Thank you. Thank you for um, the update and thank you for sharing your unique experiences with us. It, for me, I think it's encouraging to see people like you and a few that I know who haven't quite just 
rested on their oars or have become bitter about their situation mm -hmm. and blaming mm -hmm. God for it, but rather mm -hmm. channeling the gift that the Lord has given to them to make an impact in the mm -hmm. lives of others and really transforming the generation coming up. So I would actually, you know, say thanks for sharing this unique experience with us and, and encourage you to continue. Who knows? Like God is still God. Yeah. yeah. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we can be Abraham and Sarah, right? My wife and I. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. <laughs> right. <laughs> we can be the next Abraham, right? You never know. Okay. You never know. God is still God. <laughs> and, and I'll tell you something about this, um, uh, Emily and, and Abigail and everyone else. Um, here's, here's how sometimes the pressure can be. Because I remember there were people who would walk up to my wife and say to her, I'm praying that you have children. And my wife would just like look at him and say, how about a hello? <laughs> how about you say hello first? You just walked up to me and said, I'm praying that you would have children. You didn't yeah. even greet me and say hello or anything, <laughs> right? And so that's the type of pressure sometimes you have to deal with. Mm -hmm. I remember one, one person literally saying, let me touch your, your womb, your stomach, and pray over it. And my wife looked at the person like, what are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> but that's the type of pressure you can you, you can, yeah. you can deal with. Yeah. Oh yeah, certainly. And one, if I may, um, one of my bosses actually at work. He's also a Christian, and it was a pleasure like working with him alongside him. He he's also in the same unique circumstance as you find yourself, and mm -hmm. kind of shared along similar lines. You know what what you're talking about. And glad to say that to share that he's actually adopted like children mm, overseas right. and, you know, mm. sending them monthly contributions and stuff like that to right. ensure their right. overall well being. So, yeah, I mean, people can be insensitive in many ways, like clothed in a form of religion. <laughs> and to your yeah, point, no, yeah, just saying true. hello goes a long way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Someone put something in the chat. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Abby. So are you gonna uh, read some of those? Sure. So one is by LKN. She's saying okay. that thank you, Pastor Craig, for sharing. How has your story helped other men you have met or approached you to help them cope with childlessness? Oh, uh, it you know what? I, it's helped tremendously from what the feedback I've gotten and what I've heard because um when you're seen as a a, an associate pastor um, and someone who's in leadership of a church and um, they see that everyone else in, in leadership, they have, uh, you know, children and everything else and they see that you, you do not. Um, and then they hear my story. Um, it encourages them that, um, and what I do is challenge them to mm -hmm. Um, get into the lives of some of these young men who are being raised by single moms. Um, so they don't have to sit on the sideline. I use a lot of sports metaphors. Um, and so I, I tell these gentlemen. These Very brothers, understandable. Yeah, I tell them, get off the sideline, get in the game. If God has gifted you in some way, shape, or form, you need to impart that to a young man that is... Uh, that has a, a mother who's struggling to raise them. And, and we all know um, that we have, in our churches, there are a lot of single moms raising young men and young women. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, they, they, as, as Jesus once said, um, and we still read it in his word, the, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um. I hope your, your question has been answered. Yes. Did okay. I answer your question? All right. Hopefully she'll, chat, she'll type her, her answer in the chat. All right. So we'll move on to Wilson. Wilson says, would you advise people hitting 40 to marry someone their age or younger? Is desiring to have children a good enough reason to get married? No. I, I, well, let me, let me, let me, that's a two-part question. And that was mm -hmm. Wilson, right? Yeah. Okay, so Wilson, I think that's a two-part question. First part was, would I advise someone who's hitting 40 
to marry someone who's their age or younger. Well, let, let me say this. Um, in this day and age in technology, uh, women are getting uh, pregnant in their 40s and having healthy babies. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't think it, it, it's an age thing. And um, when you're looking for a mate, I don't necessarily prescribe to looking at someone's age per se. If, if you're, you're 20 years older than them, then I, I would have a problem with that. <laughs> but I mean, if it's within a, a good range, um, I think it's really prayerfully asking God, is this the person you brought into my life? And he'll reveal to you. He's not going to keep it. In, in, he's not going to keep it a secret. Mm. Mm. He's not going to keep it a secret it, it, because I've I've heard and I've seen this one where um, young men or young women have walked up to someone and said, "God revealed to me that you're going to be my husband, my wife." Yeah. And and they come to me and ask me. And I said, "Well, if they revealed it to them, why didn't he reveal it to you? you? Because yeah. why would he keep you in the dark?" something like that <laughs> it's like <laughs> if we serve a god who's strategic and, and intentional and deliberate about everything he does yeah. why would he keep you in the dark about who you're going to marry mm -hmm. he'll give you a sense of the person that mm -hmm. he is aligned you with and so in terms of whether to have children or not that's something you have to uh talk over with that significant other um and the thing is, is that if you have a desire to have children, and let's say this other person does not, um, because I've, I've, in my uh, uh, premarital counseling and stuff like that, I've come across those types of scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times what I've found is one of the spouses, the one who doesn't, is willing to compromise because the love that God has shown them towards each other has moved that person that didn't want to have um, any children and have to, and, and, I, and I'll give you a perfect example. Um, there was a couple uh, that I remember, I'm going to say about five, six years ago, uh, the wife wanted six children because she grew up in a big family. The husband didn't want any. Well, he wanted one. Hmm. They were on number three now. Yeah. <laughs> so that just tells you maybe three is the magical number. He hits the halfway point of what she yeah. actually wanted. Yeah. Um, and so you, you just you just never know how that's going to work out. But um, it, it, God will God will God will uh, give you the grace, you know, His enabling power to to accomplish it and do it in such a way that you know you both continue to love and grow in, in His love. Okay, so the the second part is is it is desiring to have children a good a good enough reason to get married? Should that be the? No, I, I don't think I, this is my own personal. I don't think desiring to have children should be the reason you get married. <laughs> I, I I believe you should get married before having children. <laughs> That's just my belief system based on God's word. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't believe that should be the driving force because where does love fit in there? Mm. Right? Because if love isn't at the foundation of why you're getting married, um, then you're, you're, you're already handicapping or uh, creating a disabled marriage. Why? Because it's not predicated on God's love. It's predicated on something you're manufacturing on your own. Mm, mm. Thank you, thank you, Wilson. I hope that answers your question. Um, Linda, Linda says yes, please. Thanks. So her question was answered. Wilson, where are you talking? Yes, I was saying that I'm also very answered. Okay, thank you. And then um, Auntie Theodosia says, "Were you ever accused of not having faith?" Was I ever accused of not having faith? Yeah. I've accused myself of not having faith. So I don't need anyone else to choose. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's been times where I've questioned my own faith, right? Because you, you face challenges in life. And, and, and the reality is, is that we're all going to face challenges. And there's going to be times 
when we will question our faith, we'll question God. Um, you know, and, and the thing is, is that I, I, I heard this said years ago, faith not tested can't be trusted. Mm. Mm. And so your faith is going to be tested. Yeah. That's why we have hall, the Hall of Faith, the Hebrews 11. When you look at all those folks that are mentioned in Hebrews 11, the faith that they exhibited, and they question because they're human. But yet still, they're considered the heroes of faith. And so, yeah, I've, I've questioned my own faith um, mm -hmm. at times. And, and But what, what's encouraged me is there are times when, you know, you feel like, okay, uh, has God forgotten you or forsaken you? And yeah. when you establish a relationship with the Lord in such a way that you can have those candid, respectful conversations with Him, uh, here's what I would say as well. One of the uh, Psalms that I, I often uh, sh share with people and tell people to go to and read if they're feeling like God has abandoned them and they feel like, oh, I, I shouldn't question a sovereign God. Mm. Go to go to uh, Psalm 88. Hey, Amen. He was one of the uh, lead, the worship leaders that David appointed. And if you read Psalm 88, take some time out to read. This guy lays it on. He says some really tough things to God. Um, and it doesn't end, but oh God, you were great and everything else. No, no, he doesn't end that way. <laughs> he is with still saying, God, you abandoned me. You've taken all my friends. You, it's not, oh, what you showed me. No, he doesn't end it that way. So if you ever get a chance, be some, there's times when you question your own faith. Yeah. Um, and, 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 and you, you want to question God, um, but you do it respectfully, but at some point in time, you can't stay there. Mm. You gotta, you know. Mm. And the other thing is, is this, and, and here's, here's the thing I would say, um, you know, James 5.16b is quoted often, right? 5.16b. Now, I, mm. I, now, if I ask most people, what is James 5.16a of that verse? They won't know it. But 516b says this, the fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Yeah. Right? Everyone quotes that. But if I followed any treasure map, I know that there's a step before B, which is A. And part A of that verse says, confess your sins to one another. Pray one mm -hmm. for another. Then mm -hmm. when you are healed, the fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. So it's okay that if I'm in a bad place, and of course, to confess it to someone and say, hey, man, I, I can't even pray for myself right now. Yeah. Can you pray for me? Mm -hmm. See, we say confess as if there's some sin attached to it. James also talks about that because he's talking about unbelief in some sense, right? But the thing is, is it, 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 it's not necessarily a, a habitual sin. It's sometimes, hey, listen, I'm struggling right now. I'm questioning God. I, I, don't, I can't even muster up my own prayer. Can you pray for me? Mm -hmm. I'm letting my brother or my sister know, and then when they pray, and I'm listening to that, it begins to open up the floodgates. There's some healing that's taking place, mm -hmm. because I'm hearing someone else interceding on my behalf. God is using that, in, that individual to intercede on my behalf in such a way that there begins to, 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 to take place a, 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 a time of healing in my own heart. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yeah. So the same person says, thank you, Craig, for being so open. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I have, um, I'll say a testimony or an experience someone is sharing. She, um, they would like to remain anonymous, but I would read it. It's, it's slightly long. So please indulge me. She says, hmm. I'm really, really enlightened. I recently had a surgery which may affect chances of having children in the future, but I really don't see having children or even getting married as a fulfillment goal. Is that abnormal? I've actually told myself that I wouldn't date a guy who desperately wants children when he gets married because I know my health challenge and wouldn't want any issues in the future. I've also had a pastor tell me I'm selfish because 
I said I didn't have marriage plans. Um, it didn't bother me at all though. At a point, I asked if I was abnormal because I was actively involved in the children's ministry of that church at the time he told me I was selfish. So this is one of my friends. Yeah, so her first question is, is it abnormal for her um, not to even look forward to having children or even getting married in the first place and having children? Okay, so I'll answer the first one and then I'll, I'll touch on the second one. So the first one, is it abnormal not to want to get married? Um, if that's the case, then I would have been abnormal. Here's why I say this. No, no, and I'm being sincere. When my girlfriend left, moved out of the place, I was in such a place where I said, I could never marry anyone because I didn't want to ruin anyone else's life the way I did with her. Okay. So in my mind, I, I shouldn't marry anyone because I'm just going to, I'm just a train wreck looking for a track to jump off of, or an accident just looking for a, for a place to happen. Mm. Um, and so I, I don't think that's abnormal. I think it's one of those things that you have to wrestle through and wonder why. Why am I feeling that I don't want to get married? Is this something I experienced in the past? Yeah. Is it something I've seen? Mm -hmm. Is it is it is it because of I don't have uh, I haven't seen um, before me what a biblical Christian marriage looks like? Not that they don't have challenges, but all I've seen is strife, division, harsh words used towards. Uh, one another, husband and wife, and stuff. If that was modeled before me, then yeah, I, I I look at that and I go, I can I can see why someone wouldn't want to be married. But you have to wrestle through that and recognize that that's not every marriage. Hmm. You have you have good marriages around you. You just have to look for them. And and I say that because I've had people who actually came to me um, who. Uh, were afraid of marrying because of that very reason. Hmm. They, they didn't. They never had a a, a, a solid marriage um, exactly. model before them. Okay. They, they didn't. They didn't understand that uh, a husband loving his wife in such a way that Christ loved the church models for his daughter uh, what a husband should be like. Yeah. So that when she grows up, she's not going to let any man disrespect her because she sees how her father treated her mother. Yeah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And so yeah. when, when you don't have that uh, model before you, that can create some hesitancy. Um, in terms of um, the second part was not having uh, or not wanting to no. have a child. Yeah. Is that abnormal? Yeah, yeah. So, so she says that, but I really don't see having children or getting married as a fulfillment goal. Is that abnormal? No. Uh, there's some people who are who are comfortable with being in their singleness. I know a number of young ladies who, who women who say, "No, I'm good with my singleness." I, I mean, I, yeah, but it just hasn't happened, and they're they're so they're so consumed now because they've accepted they they've come to a place where they believe this is what god has for them mm. that um they're so consumed with doing work for the kingdom yeah yeah I, I i i don't i don't this is my own personal thing i don't see it as selfish um if you don't have a desire to have children um god can change that desire yeah but if he does it, I don't see you as being abnormal. Yeah. And I think every, it... Go ahead. Go ahead. Who are you going to say, Abby? Yeah, I was saying that it also takes um, a lot of prayer. Yeah. You know, get, getting that confirmation from God. Yeah. Before you take... I'm saying that because she's also said that... Um, 
uh, I've actually told myself that I wouldn't date a guy who desperately wants children when he gets married because I know my health challenge and wouldn't want any issues in the future. So over here... Can I speak to that? Sure. Can I speak to that? Sure. Here's what I would say that in every situation is different and is unique in its own way, right? Mm -hmm. However, why would you put yourself in a box without first and foremost, if the relationship moved to a place where you believe this man wants to marry you and you have a conversation with him and he's willing to accept you with your health challenges and say, okay, there's alternatives, let's adopt or something like that. Why wouldn't you not have yourself open to that? I'm, I'm, that's, that would be my question. Yeah. Yeah, I believe she's listening. So. Yeah, because that, that's, I mean, to say that you absolutely uh, would not uh, get involved with anyone who, uh, who, when you initially meet them, want to have children as if their love for you can't shift and God's hand on their life can't shift that and say, okay, there's alternative, let's adopt. Because I know I actually know a couple who 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 couldn't have children, um, and the husband wanted to have children um, before they got married. And what they did was they adopted, and they're happily married. Um, they've been married longer than I've been married. Yeah, yeah. I th I think uh, I'm taking note of the word she used here. She says a guy who desperately wants children. Desperately. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, well, that's that's an extreme statement. He's desperate. Yeah. yeah. So I'm, I'm assuming that she wants to avoid a guy who is not willing to compromise. And um, um, please correct me if 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 that's it. Um, so if that's the case. Then I, I get it. I get that. If yeah. He's not willing. Then it's not going to work. It's just not going to work. So she she's commenting. She's laughing. She says. This is Ghana. Even if the guy claims to want you as you are, his family will fight you and push you out with a man watching. That's true. Sometimes it happens that way. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. And, and I get that. And, and so you 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 want to be you want to be careful because you know the cultural uh, the cultural uh, norms, uh, so to yeah. speak, um, that can come into play. Um, yeah. I've been to Africa. For, for those who, so just to let you know, I've been to Guinea-Bissau, I've been to Rwanda a couple of times, I've, I've been there, and, and so I've, I've, I've been to Africa, I've been to the Philippines, I've done a number of missions, I've done over 10 mission trips, mm. short-term mission trips, I should say. Mm. Um, so I've, I've, I've explored the world a little. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, there's another. At what point does, sorry, before we go to that, um, are you okay with the you answer? Am I okay? No, my, my friend. Oh. I don't want to mention her name, so. Oh, yeah, yeah. I guess she's sending you a uh, direct, direct message. Yes. She's direct messaging you. Okay. So she says, yes, she's okay. You're welcome. She says, thank you so much. You're welcome, my sister. All right, so we'll go to LKN who says, at what point does a childless couple have to engage in spiritual warfare type of prayers? I mean, so that's assuming that because you're childless, there's spiritual warfare going on in that statement. Yeah. Well, I guess my, my question would be, before I can answer that is, how do you know it's spiritual warfare? Hmm. Hmm. And what if you you're fighting the spirit of God? That's a losing battle. <laughs> so I, I'm not sure because you said spiritual warfare. You're assuming that you not having children is something possibly demonic. Yeah. So she's asking, at what point do you engage in such prayer? Praying for a child? No. So at what point do you? And so probably you're praying. But at what point do you change the prayer into a spiritual warfare type of prayer? 
and 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 here's and now and Abby, I will go back to this. Okay. And saying that you're not having a child, you're saying that there's something demonic at hand. Yeah. But how do you know there's something demonic at hand where you're going to go into spiritual warfare battle? Yeah. There's an earnest prayer, and, and I'll give you a perfect example of that. So, um, you know, Pastor Johnson from Brooklyn Tabernacle, him yeah. and his wife Joan. Mm. The doctors told them that his wife wasn't capable of having a child. Mm. They began to pray. They began to pray. They had the prayer bed praying. They had everyone praying. Mm. And now they have a son named Joshua, mm. who just finished his last tour in the Marines and is going into law enforcement. He's, I want to say Joshua is now like 28 years old. Okay. Yeah. They didn't consider that spiritual warfare. Mm. They just began to storm the throne of grace mm. and say, God, we, we've heard the, the, the doctor's report, but we're willing to listen to your report. Mm. Mm. Right? Because man has a report, but then God, you have the last say. Mm -hmm. And so I, I wish I could say it happened right away. They waited a number of years before God granted them that child, Joshua. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I so when you say spiritual warfare, you're you're because when Paul uses that term in, in Ephesians, when he's talking about putting on the full armor, we don't fight against flesh and blood, against principalities, and spiritual warfare, and so that you may stand. He's talking about dark things in the in the helm, the war that's going on in the heavenly realm and everything else. Up. So when you're saying spiritual warfare, it has a connotation or it gives it leads to the thinking that there's something demonic might be going on. And it might not be anything demonic going on. So I, I don't I don't know when that, that would I don't know if it's spiritual warfare prayer or it's just continuously earnestly praying okay okay so um i'll say two things for me um i'll say that it would have to like you're saying you'd have to have reason to change your prayer probably there's been a revelation you know that yeah there might be right. some demonic hindrance and that that can happen secondly especially in these parts because um, somehow we tend to have um, a lot of those things right. in, in family backgrounds for one reason or, non or another someone has made a covenant with one deity right. another right. And sometimes it it results in some of these things so i think that that's why she would ask that kind of question so again um i would say that your prayer can change to that if there's a revelation if there's been a word you know telling you mm -hmm. specifically that this is the reason because if you are earnestly praying god will reveal things right right, right? and you will right. know yeah exactly what the issue is so yeah so sometimes agree. totally agree in in our parts that's that's what happens and um, lk and i don't know whether so far your your question is is being answered do you have any follow-up questions to that and the, the other thing just to, to, to add on to what you just said Abby mm -hmm. when, when you get that revelation that it is spiritual warfare then I, I, I would say yeah then you, you're going to change up your prayer yeah um, especially because I mean that's not just over Ghana but you know you have folks who have been dedicated Right? Yeah, when they were a baby. Yeah, yeah folks. I know folks here who have been dedicated, hmm. um, um, because they had uh, family members who were uh, into Santa Maria and, and, mm -hmm. and everything else, and and hmm. so they were dealing with the dark spirits. And yeah. so you, you have to, and yeah, no. When the God reveals to you that yeah, there is this this spiritual warfare. Then yeah, I, I would say yeah. And you, yeah. you definitely have to shift gears, so to speak, and 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 ask God, okay, how, how do we pray about? We gotta pray differently now. Yeah, 
Yeah, and and I also like what you said. Okay, so she says that's right. Happy with the responses. Yeah, and I like what you said at the beginning that um, if you're not careful, you 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 realize that you're fighting God's spirit. If if, if you don't get a clear um, revelation of what's going on, you might right. jump to conclusions and say it's demonic. When all the while it's probably God who is working things out that way. And right. yeah, definitely. It will be a, a losing battle, or he might. Oh yeah, <laughs> or he, you know, the, yeah. our arms are too short to box with God. That old saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So, um, while we wait for other questions, um, when you were speaking, I forgot what you're saying, but I meant to ask. So personally, with you and Vanessa, did you have any? revelation on by yourself or from people that you're going to have children because sometimes it happens um maybe someone will be praying and they'll say oh, i saw you pregnant or i dreamt that you're pregnant or you're working with twins you know those kind of things <laughs> did you get any of that of course yeah okay. you, you, <laughs> yeah and, and you know what i there, there were people who would say you know what i i i i I believe God has shown me you guys are going to have kids. And we politely say, okay, thank you. You don't dispute that. Yeah. Um, but then you have to leave it up to God and see if that actually happens. Mm. Um, and, and, and if it doesn't, okay, I'm not sure which dream they were following. Mm. But, um, you know, and like I said um, in the beginning, my wife and I did not plan not to have Mm -hmm. And we never intentionally planned to have. Okay. We just allowed things to happen the way they did. We didn't take objections. I, I knew a couple of couples uh, that was around our age who were, you know, the wife were taking these intravenous injections and everything yeah. else. Um, and, 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 and they were watching the calendar to see if our ovaries were ovulating. DJ and I didn't want to go we just mm. said if it happens it happens if it doesn't it doesn't um, yeah. so could we have gone either way yeah but we we decided not to mm. the other thing for me i i didn't want to put my wife through taking injections okay i, I didn't want to, i didn't want to do that that was that was a choice that mm. was something I, I had in my mind already that I, i'm not going to torture my wife that way yeah yeah. And she's afraid of needles, so <laughs> so, so, so she would have seen she would have seen this torture. She's afraid of needles. <laughs> okay, uh, Wilson is saying, I have no biological children, but I am father figure to many young people. They have exposed that the love they receive from me is more than they could ever imagine. In my heart, I feel like they're mine. Is there a point where you 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 felt you still wished you had biological children? You know, I think um, that's one of those things that can come up from time to time. But here's the thing that always encourages me: my spiritual children um, always treats me like my biological children. Okay. So, for instance, the example I gave the daddy-daughter dance. That was one of those moments that God allowed me to experience that I would have experienced with a biological daughter. Yeah. He, he allowed me. So there's those moments, my brother, where God will, um, he will satisfy that thirst, if mm. I can put it that way. Mm. He will satisfy that thirst because, yeah. you know, it's in, it's in us. Right, he's created us a certain way, yeah. and sometimes we we will. But I, brother, I I commend you. Continue to continue to do the good work. Um, allow yourself to be used by God in such a way that you you help impact the next generation of leaders that's coming up behind us. Yeah. Continue to do that. Yeah. Um, but he will. He he's faithful in allowing us to. Uh, to to partake of the fruit of our labor, mm -hmm. and so that was that's kind of 
him allowing me to partake of that fruit. Yeah. So he, he, brings that you, he brings you to a point of satisfaction. You know what you're speaking? My mind just went to Psalm 23. The mm. Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leads me beside yeah. still waters. Yeah. That, that, that is a symbol of rest and satisfaction. And yeah. that's what God, God does for us. Wilson, I, I hope your question has been answered. <clears throat> okay he says yes all right thank you so much do we have any further questions or comments we have about nine minutes to go does anyone have anything to add on i'm seeing some people from brooklyn tab i to call them out <laughs> <laughs> brian and christine i've missed you <laughs> oh man do you want to say something <laughs> you know i i i appreciate those that's my a little brother and little sister right there. Yeah. So I appreciated their wedding. Oh, okay. Okay. There we go. So yeah, you need to come testify, Brian and Christine. <laughs> Hi guys. Hi Pastor. How are you? Hey, what's going on? Hey. <laughs> Mr. B, oh Chrissy, goodness. how are you? Good. Hello. Good. We had to come on and support and you know you. we know Pastor's testimony very well. Mm. So Yes, and he, he's, Love you guys. he's, he's my big brother. Yeah. We, we have to have breakfast again. Yeah. Now we're still in the whole program. We got to stop. We got to stop. We're starting to make <laughs> Sorry. We can't make this about us. All right. Love you guys. All right. Love you, Abby. Love you. Love you too. <laughs> okay. I saw a hand. Um, comfort. Are you there? I'm here. I know. I joined. I joined. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, it was a bit unclear at the beginning, but you, you keep speaking. Okay. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's great. I mean, when I when I um I saw this, uh, what is it called? The the program, the title. I thought, oh my god, I wish I could join earlier, but I couldn't. But anyway, so good. But what I wanted to say to you is, I think it's it's amazing. I mean, I've listened to so many uh, comments and all the uh, the encouragement and everything. But I believe that it always should be the will of God in Christ Jesus. To the fact that you've got people who've got like three. I mean, I've met so many people that they've got like three kids, and all these three kids got autism. Or some of them were like learning disabilities, and you're thinking, mm -hmm. if you've even got one, and it, the the child is disabled, you need to look after this child, like from the baby to when they they old, you know. So mm -hmm. sometimes I think we should be grateful. I mean, I haven't got any child to be fair. It, it would okay. be beautiful if you have a child, fine. But then, however, if it hasn't happened yet. I've always said that it should be the will of God in Christ Jesus. Because if it is will, let it be done. Because if we rush, that's what people are doing in IVF now. And it, it baffles me how people are running into these kids. Uh, and you think these are future generations that we need to look after. These are future leaders that we we, we, we try to, to bring to the world. And how how would we develop these children okay how are we grow in these children are we going to grow them in in the lord or are you going to tell them oh we couldn't have a child so we we went this way or that way. it's beautiful yes if you can afford it we all have different minds to be fair you know there's not other people who are so looking badly it will be beautiful to have a child and give it however as christians as believers i would say that we should go within the will of God in Christ Jesus. Because I know a lady as well who has a, a child and the child, I mean, I mean, he's nine years old and he's got autism. The lady has to go back and read all the eggs because she was very paranoid of having any more children, you know? And this child will be in the car. The child is nine years old. Being in the car, being in the traffic, and the child will be screaming, breaking all the glass, you know? And you thinking you sitting at home crying for a baby and I had I think there was a comment like, Oh, you have to go spiritual welfare. 
and everything. Oh, it's amazing, dude. We have to do 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 all of that. We need to pray. However, is it the will of God? Sometimes it's not the will of God for me to have children. Okay, so it's about time Christians. We need to just calm down and and keep believing that God have His way. Thank you. Thank you. You know what comfort? I'm glad you said that. Uh, I, I I love to speak to that as well. You know, I I have. I have a nephew. My my sister, um, in her marriage, she had two kids. So the firstborn, Mikey, we just celebrated his 30th birthday. He is uh, he's high on the autism spectrum, and this is before um, they started looking at putting a lot of money to research for autism um, okay. when he was born. So we're talking 30 years ago. Okay. Um, and so my that didn't frighten my sister. She's strong in her faith, um, but her husband wasn't strong in his faith. And so they, they had a second child and uh, that's Michelle. She's sharp as a whip, um, a little too sharp sometimes for me <laughs> that I got to um, let her know that I love her, but I don't like her behavior. Um, so <laughs> just, uh, but I, I, at that time, just to talk to what Comfort was saying, um, he wasn't strong in his faith, and as a result of that, he kind of abandoned the marriage. Oh. In my mind, this is my assessment. Mm. Um, you know, your firstborn, it's a boy, and you see he has these challenges. And so he, he actually um, abandoned the marriage. Um, my sister has done a tremendous job of... Uh, providing all the resources because, you know, fortunate enough, she had a, a good career that, you know, could afford Mikey uh, really good programs and everything else. And okay. um, it's, 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 it's one of those things where, uh, you know, prayer, it was prayer. And so, um, you know, and Michelle is there. And so there's sometimes you, you have these difficult situations where, you know, a child has um, special needs. And, you know, but here, here's the thing I always fall back on. And, and my, my, my sister would always say, God will never give me more than what I can handle. So if yeah. he's allowed me to have a special needs child, he knows that I can handle it. And he's going yeah. to provide me with the resources. And that's what she's she stood on. And, and, and so um, by God's grace, um, she's always been able to provide. And now she's retired and she's, she's living her life. Okay. Yeah, thank you. So that, that's a question. We have some people watching via YouTube and someone has a question. Um, sure. She says that missed most of what he shared, but has he ever thought of adopting? If not, why not? If yes, why? So she's asking whether you've ever thought of adopting. That's a good question. Um, so the, the question came up at one time. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the thing that, and, and so one of the things was, is that <clears throat> we adopted children financially. Okay. Um, we, we did, we did it that way. Um, and, and the reason we kind of did that way for me was I had already had so many children that, uh, young people that I was involved in their lives because I, you know, I was, I had a lot of single moms around me who was just saying, hey, can you um, talk to my son? Um, can you? And so um, as you know, you think through it, how can I have a, a bigger impact? And so um, we begin to, um, my wife and I literally, we, we begin to adopt um, children who we would uh, uh, su uh, support financially. Okay. So you didn't yeah. do um, the full official. We didn't do a, like a, the full official adoption. Um, yeah. Was there a reason for not doing that? Uh, I can't say there was a clear one. Um, hopefully mm. that answers your question. Um, but as we, my wife and I prayerfully went about and just asked, okay, how can we have a greater impact? Um, I know I'm giving of myself. She's giving of herself in that capacity. And then how can you know? I don't know if you know this, Abby, but before BT Kids became BT Kids, mm -hmm. had this thing called That's for Jesus, 
which get, was geared towards preteens. And my wife was the leader over it for like okay. five, six years. <laughs> so she was pouring herself out that way as well. So yeah. um, it's these young ladies that way. So she was always uh, involved. And, and so we felt, you know, to, to take it to another level, um, yeah. we make sure we, we, we materially uh, become a part of the solution to some families who are less well off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one thing that comes to mind is God. God never wastes any situation. Like He no. says, in, in all things He works for our good. So, no. I mean, whichever status you find yourself in, there's purpose for it, and yeah. it's best to look out for that purpose. Sometimes we get so fixated on what we don't have, we don't realize what God has given us, which can be equally a blessing to us yeah well, yeah we, we pray that it's just society and people so it takes again being committed to our relationship with god and that's what will help us to have the right perspective and the right yeah. hope yeah yes. so that yes. not derailed because i I've also, I've also heard stories of where um couples have have been praying for children and haven't had until they adopted a child and just when they I think if I remember correctly even Toby Mack I think I had a, a testimony of his like that that he and his wife were looking to have kids and um, they got the the word from God to adopt and just when they did his wife took seed so mm. yeah so sometimes God God wants to do things differently so we really need to be in tune with him yeah. that we can feel fulfilled. So uh, let's see. Yep, our time is up. Um, do you have any final remarks before we? Sure. Yeah. His, I, first, um, thanks again, Abby, for My allowing pleasure. me to be a part of what God is doing in you and through you and for you and, yeah. and, and creating this platform. Um, where you can bring a community of believers together um, and we can have these type of discussions. Um, as a closing remark, what I would say is, is and, and I'll just reiterate it, what I said before, um, don't give in to uh, the stigma, don't give in to others' expectation, um, continue to keep your heart inclined towards the Lord, um, He's not going to keep you in the dark yeah. about anything. Yeah. He's going to give you the breadcrumbs. He's not going to show you the whole picture because if he showed you the whole picture, we'd become overwhelmed. But he gives yeah. us the breadcrumbs, right? Mm -hmm. He gives us great revelations from time to time of mm -hmm. where we have to go. And so that's what we have to continue to do. Um, whether uh, you're a married couple and you're considering and you want, whether you are uh, considering adopting, however that works out, um, continue to lay it before the Lord like the prophets of old, yeah. and, and He'll be faithful in answering you. Mm -hmm. um, but if you are single and you don't have children and um, you're you're not in the, the the place of getting ready to get married, I would say allow God to use you to um, build up our next generation. So mm -hmm. be that that spiritual father, that spiritual mother. Uh, that spiritual big brother, big sister, spiritual aunt, um, uh, be that how God wants to use you. Um, and, and don't say that you're too busy, right? <laughs> we always use, well, I, I'm too busy. I have too many commitments and everything else. Um, I always look back at Daniel. Daniel had all these commitments, um, but yet and still he found room for God. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Craig. Um, I'm so glad you were able to make it. Uh, we've, we've learned a lot. It's been a good interaction. And uh, I believe that we're all going back with valuable lessons. I hope to so. To help us, yeah, in our work. All right. Can you please pray with us to end? So, do you want me to pray or someone else? Yeah, yeah you. Oh, okay. Father God, we, we just thank you. We thank you, Lord, for such a sensitive topic lord uh, we know that there are stigmas and expectations around uh childbearing 
um, not only for the women, but also for the men. And as best as I could, I, I tried to give the perspective uh, some of the challenges that I've faced personally, uh, some of the questions that I've had to answer personally uh, when it comes to um, having children. But Lord, I, I just always say that uh, you're in control. You hold the whole world in your hand. Father, you have a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us on this call. And so God, I just pray, Lord, that we continue, Lord, to keep our hearts inclined towards you, Lord, that you continue, Lord, to give us greater revelations, oh God, for what you want to do in our lives and through our lives and for our lives. But it's all for your glory and for your honor. Mm -hmm. God, I just pray, Lord, that if there's anyone who's struggling right now, who is overwhelmed, Lord, with this sense of fear or uh, a sense of discouragement, Lord, because of their current situation when it comes to um, the peer pressure or the culture or the family that is putting on them. God, I pray, Lord, that you would give them that peace, Lord, that you say that will far surpass our understanding, that it will guard their hearts, their feelings and their emotions, that it will guard their minds, their thought life, and they will find it in you, Christ Jesus. We thank you. We thank you that you are our Jehovah Jireh, our provider. We thank you that you are our Jehovah Rapha, our healer. We thank you, Lord, that you are El Ohim, El Shaddai. You are almighty and all-knowing everything. And so, God, we thank you for all that you're going to do through not just this platform, but what you're going to continue to do in our lives for your glory and for your honor. And Jesus, the Christ name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. God bless you and may he continue to use you to be a blessing to others. And may he light your path and show you, you that's what he, he wants you to do. Every step of it. And I love to Vanessa. Tell her. Yes, her, I will. I'll, I'll try and adjust the time such that she can also join us. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh we'll work something out, if, you know, one day in the future where, yeah. you know, if she's not uh, working, she's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, that, that works out. Sure, sure. All right. So, people. God bless you, you, everyone. God, God bless, bless you. This has been the Abby Imani Reviewed Show. And I like to say um, uh, uh, the videos are always saved on YouTube. So, you can encourage others to go there and catch up. And when you do, remind them to subscribe so that um, the, the, the information that we are providing, the encouragement and education can go far to reach out to others out there. So thank you, as usual, you can unmute your mic, you can show your faces. Let's say hello and goodbye to each other. <laughs> hey, Christine. Bye. Bye and bye.